Brilliant. Good uh, to um, be with everybody today. My name's Dr. Debs Thompson, and I'm a consultant in public health based at the Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Partnership. Um, and it is really great to be with you all today because for me, this is an opportunity for us to connect and share experiences about how our communities are coming together so that we shape the places we live, we work, we play, to ensure that every child has the same opportunity to move more, to eat well, to connect. Next slide, please. So where people grow up shouldn't matter. Next, please. But we know that walk to school is very different depending on which neighborhood you live. We know that children living in more deprived areas are much more likely to pass more fast food shops on that way to school. And we know that this has massively changed over time. Next, please. And as uh, the previous speakers have outlined, the fact that our what's available in our shops has massively changed so that now the cheapest and most available foods are those that are ultra processed, energy dense, nutrient poor. And they're also heavily marketed to vulnerable communities and particularly to children. Next, next please. That combined with the difference in opportunities that young people have to be active, both in terms of the, the places, the green access to cycle networks and abilities to walk, the green spaces, but also um, related to the time that parents have. All of those things uh, impact on what opportunities young people have. Next, please. So it's no wonder that there are differences in obesity between the neighbourhoods in Salford. And this, the, the figures have been outlined already, but just to stress, you know, children starting school from the poorest income groups are twice as likely to be obese compared to their most well-off counterparts. And by the time they get to secondary school, that's three times as likely. And we've talked about uh, this pandemic of obesity, but what we have here is a syndemic, a combination of different pandemics going on. So yes, we're in the middle of an an infectious disease pandemic with COVID and we're putting that fire out. But as we've talked about already, you know, there's a big burning fire forest behind us. So the combination of climate change, um, uh, the change in our food system, which is driving a, a, a pandemic of obesity and our, um, our infectious disease pandemic is a syndemic that we need to look at the, the root causes and what affects that. Um, so, in terms of Salford, when I share these slides, it, there's a link which will show you um, what the rates of obesity, the trends of obesity in different neighbourhoods are. Um, but just looking into that gives us hope because although the Salford is, and Greater Manchester is the same as the rest of the country and the rest of the world, that you know more deprived neighbourhoods um, definitely have higher rates of obesity in children. But there's some areas um, where the trends are not going as we'd expect. So some areas where actually obesity rates are on a downward trend and some where they aren't as high as they should be or are higher than they should be. So um, for me, that encourages us to just work to ask questions about but why and what can we do and what are we doing differently? Next, please. So. I think the important thing to stress is that we've talked a lot so far about this being, um, you know, a, a serious thing that we need to do um, and, and we need to tackle. But it's important that we, we believe that we actually can do this together. We can change this, but we can only change it if everyone plays a part. So we need to work together to create fairer options for our children where they live, where they grow, where they play. Um, we know that childhood obesity is a normal response to this abnormal environment that our children are growing up in, and, and they are surrounded by conflicting messages. So I think it's important when we communicate that we move away from a focus on knowledge and motivation and choice, which very much focuses on the individual and the family and often kind of 
is stigmatizing um, to move towards acknowledging that this is us as a society and what do we want to do together to shape the places to make it fairer for our children. Next please. This slide is just to point out really that the biggest driver for obesity, which we haven't directly mentioned yet, is poverty. So in terms of that guidance to the eat well plate, we know that the families who are in the um, lowest um, income, if they were to take that advice, they'd be spending 70% of their income on food. So we, we know that's not achievable. And we know the the, the stress that that creates um, within the family, the stress of food insecurity has further impacts on our physical and mental health. Um, so I would say if we were to do one thing and we are doing it, um, the biggest thing that we are doing to improve childhood obesity in Salford and across GM is the work to address poverty. And so it's great to hear about the work um, in, in Salford around the um, living wage. That's, that's one of the biggest things that we're doing um, to promote. And it's great to work um, with our clinicians and partners here today to look at how we, in those care pathways, in terms of supporting families to um, enable them to eat, eat well and move more, that we look at welfare provision as part of that care pathway. Next, please. So is the solution to ban fast food, some people say, but no is the simple answer because we know that the reason we have convenience food now is because of our change in lifestyle, because we're juggling many, many jobs, because we live perhaps distance from our family. Um, there's lots of reasons why convenience food now are the norm. Um, and so banning convenience food or banning fast food isn't the solution. However, there's lots of good work and I'm sure there's stuff happening across um, across Salford and across Greater Manchester in terms of fast food retailers who are shifting to look at how they can offer healthier alternatives and we need to understand how the community can work with their local food retailers to actually um, for that to grow, for that to happen more. So again, today's an opportunity for us to, to hear for some, from examples of where that's happening and to think how we can accelerate that and make it happen faster. Next, please. Again, is the solution more weight management or better weight management to support better bariatric surgery? The slide at the bottom shows the prevalence of severe obesity in Greater Manchester. So you can see that um, in that time frame, in that 10 year period, we're seeing a, a continuous increase. There's about 10,000 children now across Greater Manchester who are severely obese. And we definitely need, it's part of the solution, looking at how we can work with those families to offer that wider support, including welfare provision, um, not just um, looking at it from a health perspective, um, taking in consideration safeguarding. Um, but even if we're 100% effective at providing support for those families, we will still be in the same situation in 10 years time. So yes, it's part of the solution and we need to look at how we work together to, to support those families. We also need to work upstream to look at what we can do in terms of policy and planning to create make those structural changes and create healthier places. Next step, next slide, please. So just to finish, um, it's just to stress really that for me today is about coming together to look at how we can make changes to the places we live in so that the food environment and the fitness environment um, is, is different for our children. So this is about the balance. Yes, we need to reduce um, increase access to healthy uh, options and reduce access to unhealthy options. But um, we need to make sure we don't just focus on adding in the healthy foods because the evidence shows that that isn't going to be effective at reducing calorie intake. We need to make sure we reduce the, the consumption of unhealthy foods. 
And it's important as well not to only focus on education. <clears throat> so in terms of providing information, if we provide that information at the point of action, um, then that's much more effective than providing a leaflet or giving advice in a clinic. So it's important that we think creatively about how that's done. So that might be at the point of purchase or looking at things like um, the number of holes in the salt shaker at the fish and chips. So loads of really great work happening. And I think it's about learning from that and how we can um, share that good practice across Greater Manchester. So in terms of just to stress those, those four things we need to do to make sure we're promoting good food and drink and reducing access to unhealthy food. The affordability is the most important thing. And as I've said before, all the work we're doing in terms of uh, supporting living wage um, and all the work, if you think about the universities, the partners that are around the tape the, uh, at the conference today, schools, universities, healthcare settings, different businesses, community settings, we all have a role in terms of supporting that, 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 um, that living wage uh, program. And also um, thinking about what we offer in our, in our premises. So what's the vending machine offer in our hospitals, in our schools? What's the access to, um, to free drinking water? Can we look at the, the, the canteen? Um, and as mentioned earlier, think about the planetary diet and what offers are available that are affordable, portion size. So all these things um, are part of the solution. Um, and then in terms of desirability and acceptability, it's great that the government have acknowledged that online marketing to children of fast food or of unhealthy food is a key driver. Um, and so th that national and international um, uh, regulation which is needed um, will, will support the work we're doing here. But there's also fantastic work around um, using social marketing and different campaigns to give up loving pop, that kind of thing. So for me today, it's about exploring what's already happening and how we can scale it up. So look forward to hearing from all of you and working with you together. We're gonna um, make a difference for our young children. Thank you.